In the unforgiving chaos of the open ocean, the world's largest machines perform feats that defy belief. We see the images. A crane vessel lifting an entire oil rig platform, a structure weighing thousands of tons, and we think the spectacle is in the lift itself. But that's a misconception. The lift, that's the easy part. The real battle isn't against gravity. It's against time, chaos, and the cold, hard laws of physics. It's a battle fought with supercomputers, thousands of tons of moving water, and a single, irreversible decision made by robots in the crushing dark of the seabed. This is the story of what it truly takes to control forces that could end careers in an instant. Before we explore the hidden challenges, we have to meet the machines themselves. These aren't just cranes. They are semi-submersible cities of steel, designed to work in the most hostile environments on Earth. For decades, the Undisputed Kings were two legendary vessels that defined the limits of what was possible. First is the Saipem 7000. Commissioned in 1987, this vessel set the standard for heavy lifting for over 30 years. It's a twin crane behemoth, with each of its two fully revolving cranes capable of hoisting 7,000 metric tons at a 40-meter radius. Working in tandem, they provide a staggering combined lift capacity of 14,000 metric tons. The vessel itself is a massive platform, measuring 198 meters long, supported by two submerged pontoons for stability. It's a self-propelled unit with a crew capacity for over 700 people, making it a true offshore construction hub. Throughout its long career, the Saipem 7000 has been a cornerstone of the industry, famously lifting the 12,150-ton topside for the Sabretha platform in the Mediterranean and undertaking critical salvage work on the Russian submarine Kursk. It is a workhorse that built the infrastructure powering our world. Its main competitor and the long-reigning champion by a razor-thin margin is the SSCV Tyalf. Operated by Hayrama Marine contractors, the Tyalf pushed the limits just a little further upon its completion in 1985. Its two cranes can lift 7,100 metric tons each, giving it a combined capacity of 14,200 metric tons. Like the Saipem 7000, it is a semi-submersible crane vessel, SSCV, giving it immense stability in rough seas. Its deck roughly the size of a football field, provides ample space for fabricating and assembling massive components. The Tyalf held the world record for a tandem lift for years, notably installing the 11,883-ton topsides for Shell's Shearwater platform. Its dynamic positioning system allows it to hold its position with incredible accuracy, making it a legend in the unforgiving waters of the North Sea. But in 2019, a new Titan entered the arena and shattered all previous records. The SSCV Sleipnir, also built for Hayrama, represents a new generation of power. Named after the eight-legged horse of the Norse god Odin, the Sleipnir is a true marvel. Its two massive revolving cranes, built by Hausman, can each lift 10,000 metric tons. Together, its total capacity is an unprecedented 20,000 metric tons. The vessel is over 220 meters long and can accommodate 400 personnel. On one of its very first jobs, it lifted the 15,300 ton topside module for Noble Energy's Leviathan project in Israel, a world record at the time. But its innovation isn't just in strength. It's the first crane vessel of its kind powered by liquefied natural gas, a practical decision allowing it to stay in the field longer and operate more efficiently with fewer emissions. These three vessels can lift almost anything man can build. But owning the world's strongest crane means nothing if you can't control the one variable that governs every single offshore operation, the ocean itself. It begs the question, with 20,000 tons of power on call, is that raw strength the solution, or is it just the price of admission to a far more complex and dangerous game? 
The greatest challenge in any offshore lift begins months or even years before the vessel ever leaves port. It's a quiet, methodical war waged not with steel, but with data. This is the master plan. You aren't just lifting a solid block of steel. You're lifting a complex, sprawling structure with an uneven weight distribution. A multi-billion dollar oil platform topside, for example. Lifting it from the wrong points could cause the entire structure to buckle under its own weight. To prevent this, engineers create a digital twin, an exact 3D model of the structure and the crane vessel itself. Every single beam, weld, and bolt is accounted for in a virtual environment. They run hundreds of simulations, testing every variable – sling tension, lift points, and the structure's center of gravity. One wrong number in the code, one miscalculation of a stress point could lead to a catastrophic failure in the real world. Think of it like trying to lift a massive, fragile spiderweb. If you don't support it in perfect harmony, it will tear itself apart. While the digital plan is being perfected, another team is fighting a different battle – the one against the weather. An offshore lift of this magnitude requires what's known as a weather window, a guaranteed period of calm often lasting 72 hours or more. It's a high-stakes gamble. Meteorologists use advanced modeling to predict wave height, wind speed, and ocean currents, but nature is never truly predictable. A single rogue wave, cresting just a few feet higher than forecast, could send thousands of tons of steel swinging, jeopardizing the entire project and the lives of everyone on board. The operation is a masterclass in risk management, but at the end of the day, it's a bet against chaos. So, how do you even begin a lift when the structure wants to tear itself apart and the ocean wants to throw you around? This is where the true genius of these vessels comes into play. With the plan finalized and the weather window open, the crane vessel arrives on site. But holding a floating platform measuring hundreds of feet long perfectly still against relentless ocean currents is an immense challenge. This is accomplished through a system called Dynamic Positioning, or DP. The vessel isn't anchored to the seafloor. Instead, a network of powerful, GPS-guided thrusters located on its pontoons fire continuously. Guided by satellite data, the ship's computer knows its exact location down to within tens of centimeters. When a current pushes the vessel with thousands of pounds of force to the east, the thrusters instantly counteract it, pushing it back to the west. For days on end, this system holds the floating city perfectly stationary over the target. With the vessel locked in place, the lift begins, and so does the live, computer-controlled ballet known as ballasting. As the cranes begin to take the load, all 20,000 metric tons of it, that immense weight is transferred to one side of the vessel, threatening to make it list or tilt. To counteract this, a powerful system of pumps begins shifting thousands of tons of seawater between enormous ballast tanks located deep inside the hull. This isn't a slow, gradual process. The pumps can move water at thousands of cubic meters per hour, responding in real time to the crane's load sensors. It's a closed loop of constant feedback and adjustment. A network of valves, orchestrated by the central computer, executes this immense water transfer with flawless precision. This constant automated adjustment maintains stability to within a fraction of a degree. Even the slightest list could translate to a dangerous swing hundreds of feet in the air. So the system uses hypersensitive inclinometers to predict and counteract movement before it starts. It's a live balancing act on a scale that is almost impossible to comprehend. The plan is set. The vessel is locked in position. The balancing system is active. Now, the crew faces the final irreversible moment where there is no turning back. When the crane slings attached and tensioned, the entire operation hinges on one final action that takes place hundreds of feet below the surface. Inside the vessel's control room, the tense silence is a stark contrast to the immense forces at play. On the main screen, the ROV's camera displays the final steel support, 
a ghostly image in the deep sea gloom. Dozens of monitors stream data, GPS coordinates stable to within tens of centimeters, ballast levels in perfect equilibrium, and sling tensions rising in unison. The project manager's voice, calm and measured, cuts the quiet. Proceed with final severance. The ROV pilot confirms. With a single mouse click, an irreversible command is sent. This is the point of no return. On screen, the cutting tool flares to life, severing the last physical connection to the seabed. For a split second, there is nothing but data. The load cells on the crane hooks instantly register the full crushing weight, a number that has only existed in simulations until now. There is no going back. If there was any error in the 3D model, any miscalculation in the ballast, or any failure in the positioning system, it will be revealed in this instant. The entire crew holds their breath, watching for the slightest deviation, the smallest red warning light. For these agonizing few seconds, the entire project, worth billions of dollars and years of work, hangs in the balance, held only by steel cables and the integrity of the plan. Then a new voice confirms. Load is stable. Ballast is compensating. We are green across the board. The collective tension in the room breaks. The lift, the part everyone sees, finally begins. The structure slowly rises from the water, a triumphant moment of victory for the dozens of engineers, pilots, and crew who mastered the chaos. So, while the image of a 20,000-ton lift captures the imagination, the real genius is mastering the unseen challenges of planning, positioning, and the final commitment. The lift is simply the final, visible reward. Thanks for watching Hard Hat Industries, your source for serious machines doing real work. If you like this, hit like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. Until then, keep your head down and your gear running.